night vision. Hot topic right now, always been cool, but what is it like? There are a lot of really great videos on YouTube about um, how to use it while shooting, there's some stuff about driving a little bit, but what does it actually feel like to wear the goggles, and is it worth it? Welcome to the channel, this is Roland J's Blast and AKs. I'm here to say it's okay to be a liberal and a gun owner and interested in these things and have a lot of fun doing it. What you're looking at right now is the ATN PVS-7. In particular, this is the 3P model. So this is a generation three night observation device. And uh, what comes along with it, you're looking at most of it is on this section of the table right here. Of course, you've got your manual, which I highly recommend. You've got the uh, head mount assembly right here. Uh, these are called skull crushers by people in the business because it just goes right on your noggin, it straps that device right on your head. It comes with this nylon carry bag that has a shoulder strap and also a buckle, as well as what appears to be a piece of paracord to tie it around your leg. So if you wear this on your belt, it uh, doesn't slap against your leg, or at least it does less so. You've obviously got the night vision device right here, also called the goggle assembly, and a very important piece of equipment that comes with it, besides the two AA batteries that it requires to run on, is what's called your sacrificial window. And in the photography world, this is pretty much exactly like a UV filter, except sacrificial window is such a cooler name. Basically, this goes over the end of the objective lens and it helps protect against dust, debris, possible impact, stuff like that. Before we talk about money, I wanna say ATN has not hired me or paid me to do any of this. They didn't send me any of this stuff. This is my equipment and I'm just sharing with you what I've learned as a beginner in the world of night vision. I've got about three to four hours in these goggles walking around in moonless nights and I'm here to tell you what it feels like wearing those goggles. So let's talk about money a little bit. This unit is gonna run you somewhere in the ballpark of $3,000, depending on where you buy it from. In addition to the unit itself, which comes with what you need to get up and running, there's about $120 worth of accessories that I highly recommend before you take to the field. The first and most important it's called the Light Interference Filter, or LIF. This goes inside the simple objective lens on the front, but underneath the sacrificial window, underneath the lens cap that you see on the end of the device right now. And this uh, helps protect the internals of the device, specifically from laser beams, but also from intense light. For about 50 or 60 bucks, I recommend buying one of those. Also, you've got a um, IR spot flood lens. And what this little device does is this attaches onto the IR illuminator of the goggle unit and it just basically fits right on and you rotate it to focus the beam. So instead of having just a broad wash this allows the user to kind of focus it to a very fine spotlight over a greater distance or broaden it as you're using it. Playing with that in the field is really cool because sometimes when, I'm, when I've been walking around with it, there'll be an object that's across an open field, maybe 50, 70 yards away, and I don't have any other IR illumination devices with me. so. What I do is I click on the IR illuminator and I zoom that in and it projects the beam of light in a very focused way so I can identify what I'm looking at. Generally, so far, it's just been a garbage can or a tree stump or something. Other accessories you're going to want to get are lens tissues. You're not supposed to use soap um, or any kind of chemicals on the lenses of this device. In particular, on the demisting shields. I'm gonna get back to demisting shields in a little bit when I talk about front to back 
the PVS7. So lens paper and water is what the manual recommends you clean this with. The demisting shields, you do not use water, you just use the dry paper. Or a lens blower. You can get one of these for like $5. Basically, there's a little puffy air kind of thing and a little brush. And you can use this to just gently sweep dirt and debris off of any of the lenses or of the device itself. And if you see something that's in there, you can just kind of puff air on it. And a lot of times it'll fly out. You don't even need to touch the lenses. When it comes to optics and lenses, the less you touch them, the better. Because every time you make contact with the surface of that lens, you're wearing away the protective coating on it. Finally, you're gonna want some batteries. It blows my mind that this device runs on two AA batteries. The, the audio recorder that I'm using to produce this video right now takes four, and it doesn't help me see anything. So this will last hours and hours on AA batteries. According to the manual, you're gonna get between 90 to 160 hours of life on two AA batteries, depending on how much you use the IR illuminator. In general, you're looking to be somewhere in the realm of $3,000 up to $3,300 out um, if you're going to buy one of these devices. Moving on. Let's... You want to hang out? You want to hang out here, dog? Let's talk about the device from front to back here. This is our simple objective lens that's on the front. And this is where you're gonna be focusing this device while you're using it. That's where the lens cap goes on. Do not take the lens cap off during the day. Do not expose this unit directly to bright lights. We'll talk more about this later. Next, we've got the wired housing assembly, which is this main rectangular body portion in the center. And that features the latch that you use to attach it to your head mount or your helmet mount, depending on which way you wanna go. You've got your battery compartment, obviously. That's where two AA batteries go. The indicator for which direction to put the batteries is right here. Incidentally, they go positive side first. You've also got on the wired housing assembly your on, off, I and IR illumination switch right here on the left side of the unit. And that makes a uh, very positive click when you turn it. You turn it clockwise, so as you're wearing it, you turn it towards yourself to turn it on. Uh, to use the IR illuminator, which is also on the wired housing assembly, there's two options. One is a momentary, where as the unit is on, you just rotate the on-off reset switch towards yourself further. It is spring-loaded. The IR illuminator will turn on while you hold it. When you release, it goes back off. You can also pull it out and rotate it towards you and lock it into place. Now the IR illuminator is permanently on. You can walk around using these things. You're focusing your uh, IR flood focus lens right here. Also inside of the wired housing assembly, that's where your image intensifier tube is at. We can't see that. We don't want to see that. That needs to stay in the darkness of the wired housing assembly. On the back end, you've got your eyepieces and uh, the, the rubber eye cups, and you've got your diopters. Diopters are basically how you focus the eyepieces onto the screens of the wired housing assembly. When you're focusing these for the very first time, you first adjust the objective lens focus, and then one eye at a time, you fold the rubber cup over, and you're looking through, and you adjust the diopter, which is these rings that are on each goggle. There's also what's called interpupillary adjustment, which is moving the eyepieces closer or further away to adjust for your eyeballs and how close or far away those are. Um, when I'm walking around with these, I'm finding myself actually folding the eye cups down because when this comes up to my face, that at least leaves me some peripheral vision. Granted, I'm focused on the image that's here, 
and the screens, but if I need to, I can just sort of tilt my head down and I can look out the side. Whereas if I've got these cups folded over, it really helps block out any kind of ambient light, but two things happen. I lose anything that's to my sides, and then there's really no airflow in between my eyes and the uh, eyepieces right there. So on the eyepieces, something you're gonna wanna do is snap in the demisting shields, which is really kind of a fancy name for like uh, an anti a clip-on anti-fog lens. They're just little tiny discs that are coated to prevent uh, condensation from building up inside or outside. You pop them in. Again, it helps protect against debris, dirt, but most importantly, moisture. So no matter how hot you get, how sweaty you get, or the environment, moisture is going to be a lot less clingy. Do they work 100% perfectly? I mean, if you dump water on it or if sweat drops right on there, it's going to be on there. You might have to take out your lens blower and push that off. Uh, but you, you do not want to touch the, um, the demisting shields with a, a physical object while they're wet because that will ruin the coating. So what is it like actually using these things? And what are the steps you take when you first go in a, to put this on your head? Well, um, if you don't have a helmet and a helmet mount to go with, you're going to be using... Uh, the the head mount right here and without going all the way with it basically this goes on like so and then uh, you tighten everything down if you've got a beard I personally I've been just pushing it up and it's uncomfortable no matter what push it down I, whatever it's your beard um, and then on here you've got a sliding mechanism that moves back and forth, and this is where the goggles themselves mount on. So it uses the latch, and it just attaches right there, and then you move it closer or further away. And uh, a really cool feature is when you, if you have them latched on and you take them off, it automatically powers down. You will have to kick it to off and then kick it back on when you wanna use them again. But anyways, that's how that works. You've got it on your head now, okay? The first thing I need to talk about is the field of view. So if you want to get an understanding of what it's like looking through this lens, which provides a 40-degree field of view, here's what I really recommend. Take a couple of toilet paper rolls, cut them down to two and a quarter inches in length. This is what I found to be closest. This is not scientific. Put them up to your eyes and move them so that you only see one circle. And now cup your hands around where they're in front of your eyes. This is all you can see. I cannot see anything to my right. I cannot see anything to my left. I cannot see the ground I'm walking on. I can't see anything above me. My sense of periphery is totally gone. So anytime you hear someone say, well, with night vision, you can't see the ground, it's not because the ground magically disappears or something. You literally just cannot see that angle below you. So field of view gets really narrow. This is, this is life through the goggles. And something that's also interesting about it is there feels like a slight zooming effect to it, almost like the, the lens is zooming in. And I think this is because your eyes effectively are now eight inches in front of what you're used to, in front of your face. If you wanna look around, you have to really exaggerate your head movement. You can't glance at anything. There's no glancing with night vision. You have to fully commit where you're looking. Depth of field. So it is 100% true if you've heard the depth of field with Night vision goggles is very shallow. And here's what that means. Depth of field is a photography term. When I'm looking at my hand here and I look to some object that's beyond the camera, my eyes automatically focus back and forth. They automatically do that adjustment. If I'm taking a photograph with a smartphone, I'm holding up the phone and I just tap what I want to focus on and the camera and the, the software in the phone does the work. This does not have any kind of dynamic autofocus functions. So, let's, here's an extreme example. I want to look at my watch. 
So I've got the goggle up to my face. I'm going to focus to 12 inches away. When I go to look up now and I go to look at anything that is more than 12 inches away, it is completely indiscernible. I am blind, effectively. So as I'm walking along, if I want to look at the ground and I want to see detail on the ground, I'm focusing while I'm looking up and looking down. So if you're familiar with photography and you have your f-stop completely wide open, you let in as much light as possible, but you cannot focus on things that are in front or behind each other at the same time. It's either foreground or background. Let's talk a little bit about moving around with these things. So talking about walking, you're not going to get night vision and start running in the dark. That's going to be the easiest way to destroy a $3,000 device and end up in a hospital because you smashed your face in. You have to start off walk working very slowly. And only when you're on very predictable terrain, like uh, a sidewalk or a road or something, then does it become easy to move more quickly. But if you're moving over any kind of uneven terrain, I'm even talking through like a nature trail, it's going to be very easy to trip if you're not moving slowly and looking at the ground, looking forward periodically. Okay, so what does the actual lens display look like on, on the eyepieces? What are you seeing? It is green or white, depending on whether it's white phosphor or not. This is a green set. This, does, this is not a white phosphor set. And something that's interesting that you'll see if you look at other night vision videos is there's this thing called scintillation. That's video noise. So if you've ever seen an analog TV, it's like all these little tiny dots that are just moving around very quickly. This is totally normal. It's a part of how the device works. They're just scattering all over your vision. They're not obscuring the vision at all. It's just a part of what it looks like as an analog electronic device. So what is it like being in a dark, moonless night on a nature trail with or without night vision goggles? Well, without the night vision goggles, it's possible for me to see that there's a path. I cannot see detail on the path or detail of anything around me. Someone could be standing on the path 20 feet ahead and I could not tell. Someone could be laying in the ground next to me in the bush and I would not be able to see at all. So could I navigate? Possibly. I could, if I knew where I was, I could probably get through somewhere that was totally dark. Um, but you really can't see any kind of detail or a potential threat or anything that you're looking for more than five or ten feet in front of you. And I'm talking about a dark night on a dark path. With the night vision goggles, especially with the IR flood lens turned on, it's like bright as day. It's as though you're walking around in the afternoon and you cannot see color and the detail is not as sharp as the naked eye, uh, or the eye assisted with proper prescription lenses. But the point is you can see. And the one thing that really startled me more than anything when I was getting used to what it's like with these goggles is my own shadow. Because I associate seeing my shadow with a very direct bright light. But um, I found myself seeing my shadow and feeling like I must be in direct light, I take the goggles off and I'm standing in darkness. And it's just some really, really distant light from a city or a car way down the road or something. So uh, they do the job. And it is something that you have to see to believe. If you're going to get one of these, here are some tips for familiarizing yourself with them. I went to a dog park that I am very familiar with. I've been going to this dog park near where I live for uh, two years at least, walking dogs, going there with my son. And um, I went there at about 10.30 at night when there was nobody there at all. I know the paths. I know where the, the path goes up and down, where curves are. Uh, I know things to avoid. So... I recommend uh, getting outdoors. I do not recommend walking around in your house, as tempting as it's going to be, because the quarters are too close. Uh, there's too much stuff to bump into and fall on. It's not worth it. Get out somewhere that you've got a lot of open space. 
I do not recommend any kind of mountains or any kind of really rocky or unstable terrain for when you're getting used to night vision goggles. You're gonna hurt yourself. You're gonna smash the goggles or something. How awkward it feels initially looking through the lens takes some time to overcome. So uh, if you're gonna do it, tell someone where you're going. And I recommend practicing everything in the dark. I recommend assembling this unit in the dark, the batteries, the filters, the lens caps, uh, where you keep things in the bag. Practice all of that in the dark because if you're gonna be using your NVGs, it's gonna be in the dark. So that way, without even looking at it, you can see, you can feel, you have a sense of where everything is, including and especially latching it onto your head mount um, if that's what you've got. If you've got a helmet with a, a flip mount, then it's not necessarily such a big deal. At the end of your journey, after you've finally tested your goggles, you just want to clean them with lens paper and water. The demisting shields, just dry paper, dry lens paper or the blower. The objective lens itself, you could use a little bit of water on and the lens paper. The housing, uh, same thing. So, is it worth the cost? It's an expensive buy-in. Do you have a need or is it something that you really just want and you can swing it because it's freaking cool? Well, if you're, let's talk about the tactical kind of situation first. What night vision goggles give you is situational awareness in an environment where otherwise you would be absolutely vulnerable and you cannot see very far you're unable to discern what is a threat and what is a garbage can, uh, or if you're looking for something, and if your life is truly going to depend on having first strike capability in a dark environment, in a nighttime environment, then yeah, these are quite necessary, and there's no price that you can put on what it's going to be having a jump on uh, someone that's potentially going to be fighting you. Along with that, you need to expect extensive training using night vision goggles before you're going to take them in the field or anywhere that you're expecting any kind of threat. Uh, not only is it difficult to move around with these, but manipulating weapons and aiming a weapon at an intended target is even more difficult. I'm not going to talk about that because there are already great videos on this subject. So in terms of civilian life, do you need these? You're going to have to be the judge of that. But here has been my experience and what I want to say about why I freaking love my PVS-7s. I'm a night owl kind of person. I naturally want to go to bed around 2 a.m. and wake up around somewhere between 8 to 9 in the morning. I like to be up at night. It's quiet. It's beautiful. It's calm. It's cooler. What these night vision goggles have allowed me to do is reclaim that night that otherwise there's not much to do. I'm not suggesting that you get these and just start wandering around or start urban spelunking, although you could, but I can take these and go to a park and enjoy time by myself in the calm of the evening. As a kid, I grew up in a neighborhood where I had friends who lived in the neighborhood, and we played manhunt, which is essentially hide-and-go-seek in the dark. You've got a base that you go to. And so for me, there was a lot of nostalgia of being awake at night, what the breeze feels like, what the air feels like. And for me, that's a lot of fun. There's also something that's very beautiful about seeing how the light interacts with the world in dark environments through the night vision goggles. In particular, something that struck me was uh, I was walking along train tracks around a curved road, and uh, my sense of where cars actually were is totally off because the light from the cars splashes and reflects very far ahead. And so as I'm walking along these train tracks, I'm seeing the light, but I'm seeing strings of light like like a piece of fiber optic glass, the light is moving along the railroad tracks. 
And to me, that was very beautiful. And I, so I could tell, um, I don't know how far, but uh, several seconds, close to 30 seconds ahead of when a car was going to be coming. That to me was fun. Um, getting to be awake when nighttime animals are awake, that was fun. So are they cool despite the limitations, despite the narrow field of view, the shallow depth of field, um, the cost? Yeah, I mean, this is they're really awesome. So that's my opinion on night vision goggles, specifically the ATN PVS7 Generation 3. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And uh, click like, click subscribe. You'll see at this moment, it's August 2020. This is a new station. So if you want to know more of what's coming down the pipeline, click like and subscribe. And uh, if you've watched this far, Thank you for listening to me talk about this so much, and I look forward to your comments, and I'll try and answer any questions I possibly can. Peace, stay safe, and uh, choose love. That's, that's the way forward.